Hello dear students, in the fourth and final part of the topic of sexual reproduction in flowering plants under the unit reproduction, we will cover double fertilization, post fertilization structures and events like development of endosperm and embryo, formation of seeds in the fruits, parthenocarpic fruits and the process of apomixis and polyembryony. In the third part of this chapter, we have already discussed the process of pollination and its kinds, pollen pistil interaction and artificial hybridization. We close the third episode with a point to think about. Let us discuss it first. The point was, what is vivipary in plants? The answer is that in plants, vivipary is the condition where the embryo or the young plant within the seed grows first to break through the seed coat, then out of the fruit wall, while still attached to the parent plant. This condition is commonly found in mangroves, which grow in saline coastal sediment habitats. So dear students, now let us start with the next part of the topic, sexual reproduction in plants. Now let us discuss the process of double fertilization. After entering one of the synergids, the pollen tube releases the two male gametes into the cytoplasm of the synergid. One of the male gametes moves towards the egg cell and fuses with the nucleus, in this way completing the syngamy. This results in the formation of a diploid cell, the zygote. The other male gamete moves towards the two polar nuclei located in the central cell and fuses with them to produce a triploid primary endosperm nucleus. You can observe a fertilized embryo sac showing zygote and primary endosperm nucleus in this diagram. Students, because this process of producing a triploid primary endosperm nucleus involves the fusion of three haploid nuclei, it is termed triple fusion. Since two type of fusions, syngamy and triple fusion take place in an embryo sac, the phenomenon is termed as double fertilization, an event unique to flowering plants. The central cell after triple fusion becomes the primary endosperm cell and develops into the endosperm while the zygote develops into an embryo. The next point for discussion is post fertilization structures and events. Students, after double fertilization, events of endosperm and embryo development, maturation of ovules into seeds and ovary into fruit are collectively termed as post fertilization events. First, let us discuss the development of the endosperm. Endosperm development happens before the embryo development. The primary endosperm cell divides repeatedly and forms a triploid endosperm tissue. The cells of this tissue are filled with reserve food materials and are used for the nutrition of the developing embryo. In the most common type of endosperm development, the primary endosperm nucleus undergoes successive nuclear divisions to give rise to free nuclei. This stage of endosperm development is called free nuclear endosperm. Subsequently, cell wall formation occurs and the endosperm becomes cellular. The number of free nuclei formed before cellularization varies greatly. Dear students, the coconut water from tender coconut that you are familiar with is an example of free nuclear endosperm, which is made up of thousands of nuclei and the surrounding white kernel is the cellular endosperm. Endosperm may either be completely consumed by the developing embryo as it is found in pea, groundnut, beans, etc. before seed maturation or it may persist in the mature seeds as found in castor and coconut and be used up during seed germination. Students, for having a better idea, you can split open some seeds of castor, peas, beans, groundnut, fruit of coconut and you can look for endosperm in each case. Find out whether the endosperm is persistent in cereals like wheat, rice and maize or not. Now, let us discuss the embryo. Embryo develops at the micropylar end of the embryo sac, where the zygote is situated. 
most zygotes divide only after certain amount of endosperm is formed. This is an adaptation to provide assured nutrition to the developing embryo. Though the seeds differ greatly, the early stages of embryo development, which is called embryogeny, are similar in both monocotyledons and dicotyledons. Here in this figure, you can observe the stages of embryogeny in a dicotyledonous embryo. The zygote gives rise to the proembryo and subsequently to the globular, heart-shaped and mature embryo. A typical dicotyledonous embryo which is shown in this diagram consists of an embryonal axis and two cotyledons. The portion of embryonal axis above the level of cotyledons is the epicotyle which terminates with the plumule or stem tip. The cylindrical portion below the level of cotyledons is hypocotyle that terminates at its lower end in the radical or root tip. The root tip is covered with a root cap. Embryos of monocotyledons possess only one cotyledon. You can observe this in the longitudinal section of an embryo of grass in this diagram. In the grass family, the cotyledons is called scutellum that is situated towards the lateral side of the embryonal axis. At its lower end, the embryonal axis has the radical and root cap enclosed in an undifferentiated sheath called coloriza. The portion of the embryonal axis above the level of attachment of scutellum is the epicotyle. Epicotyle has a shoot apex and a few leaf primordia enclosed in a hollow foliar structure which is called the cleoptile. Dear students, you can observe the various parts of the embryo and the seed by soaking a few seeds of wheat, maize, peas, chickpeas, groundnut etc. in water overnight and then split them open and you can observe these seeds. Now, let us discuss about the seed. In angiosperms, the seed is the final product of sexual reproduction. It is often described as a fertilized ovule. Seeds are formed inside the fruits. A seed typically consists of seed coats, cotyledons and an embryo axis. The cotyledons of the embryo are simple structures, generally thick and swollen due to storage of food reserves as found in legumes. Mature seeds may be non-albuminous or albuminous. We can observe the structure of some seeds in these diagrams. The non-albuminous seeds have no residual endosperm as it is completely consumed during embryo development like in pea, groundnut, sunflower etc. Albuminous seeds retain a part of endosperm as it is not completely used up during embryo development like in wheat, maize, barley, castor, etc. Occasionally, in some seeds such as black pepper and beet, remnants of nucellus are also persistent. This residual persistent nucellus is the perisperm. Integuments of ovules hardens as tough protective seed coats. The micropyle remains as a small pore in the seed coat this facilitates entry of oxygen and water into the seed during germination. As the seed matures, its water content is reduced and seeds become relatively dry with only 10 to 15 percent moisture by mass. The general metabolic activity of the embryo slows down. The embryo may enter a state of inactivity called dormancy. If favorable conditions are available, which may be adequate moisture, oxygen and suitable temperature, they germinate. Dear students, as ovule mature into seeds, the ovary develops into a fruit, which means the transformation of ovules into seeds and ovary into fruit proceeds simultaneously. The wall of the ovary develops into the wall of fruit called the pericarp. The fruits may be fleshy as in guava, 
orange, mango, etc., or may be dry, as in groundnut and mustard, etc. Many fruits have evolved mechanisms for dispersal of seeds. In most plants, by the time the fruit develops from the ovary, other floral parts degenerate and fall off. However, in a few species such as apple, strawberry, cashew, etc., the thalamus also contribute to fruit formation. Such fruits are called false fruits. We can observe the sections of false fruit of apple and strawberry in this diagram. Most fruits, however, develop only from the ovary and are called true fruits. Although in most of the species, fruits are the result of fertilization, but there are few species in which fruits develop without fertilization. Such fruits are called parthenocarpic fruits. Banana is one such example. Parthenocarpy can be induced through the application of growth hormones and the fruits developed by parthenocarpy are seedless. Seeds offer several advantages to angiosperms. Firstly, since reproductive processes such as pollination and fertilization are independent of water, seed formation is more dependable. Also, seeds have better adaptive strategies for dispersal to new habitats and help the species to colonize in other areas. As seeds have sufficient food reserves, young seedlings are nourished until they are capable of photosynthesis on their own. The hard seed coat provides protection to the young embryo. Being products of sexual reproduction, they generate new genetic combinations leading to variations. Dear students, seed is the basis of our agriculture. Dehydration and dormancy of mature seeds are crucial for storage of seeds, which can be used as food throughout the year and also to raise crop in the next season. The period of the seeds remaining alive after dispersal varies greatly. In a few species, the seeds lose viability within a few months. Seeds of a large number of species live for several years. Some seeds can remain alive for hundreds of years. Students, finally let us discuss apomixis and polyembryony. Although seeds in general are the products of fertilization, a few flowering plants such as some species of asteraceae and grasses have evolved a special mechanism to produce seeds without fertilization. This process is called apomixis. Thus, apomixis is a form of asexual reproduction that mimics sexual reproduction. Students, in some species, the diploid egg cell is formed without reduction division and develops into the embryo without fertilization. More often, as in many citrus and mango varieties, some of the nucellar cells surrounding the embryo sac start dividing, protrude into the embryo sac and develop into the embryos. In such species, each ovule contains many embryos. Occurrence of more than one embryo in a seed is referred as polyembryony. Hybrid varieties of several of our food and vegetable crops are being extensively cultivated. Cultivation of hybrids has tremendously increased productivity. One of the problems of hybrids is that hybrid seeds have to be produced every year. If the seeds collected from hybrids are sown, the plants in the progeny will segregate and do not maintain hybrid characters. Production of hybrid seed is costly and hence the cost of hybrid seeds become too expensive for the farmers. If these hybrids are made into apomix, there is no segregation of characters in the hybrid progeny. Then the farmers can keep on using the hybrid seeds to raise new crop year after year and he does not have to buy hybrid seeds every year. Because of the importance of apomixis in hybrid seed industry, active research is going on in many laboratories around the world. 
to understand the genetics of apomixis and to transfer apomictic genes into hybrid varieties. Dear students, now we have come to an end of this chapter on sexual reproduction in plants. In the first part of this topic, we have discussed about flower as a reproductive structure of angiosperms, the male and female parts of the flower, the structure and development of microsporangia and the pollen grain. The second part has covered the structure and development of the megasporangium or the ovule and the embryo sac along with its types. The third part covered the detailed account of pollination, its kinds, pollen pistil interaction and artificial hybridization. Finally, the last part covered double fertilization and post fertilization structures and events like endosperm and embryo development, formation of seeds in the fruits, parthenocarpic fruits and the process of apomixis and polyembryony. With this, we conclude this lesson. Wish you all the best. Thank you.